<clears throat> well, so I think it's it's time to start. I'm going to start talking, and if people come along, that that's good. So first of all, I want to thank you for being here. Uh, I hope you're enjoying Medium Day. I am. I want to thank Medium for organizing all this. So um, thank you, Medium. Uh, my name is Eric, and I'm going to talk to you about an article I wrote called Bridging the Gap, My Journey to Becoming a Data Analyst at 34. So basically, yeah, this is the story of my career transition. Um, I want to talk for about 15 minutes, more or less, and the rest of the time we can do some Q&As if, if you have questions. Um, before I begin, I would like to say why I decided to write this article. And there is basically three reasons. First of all, I like writing, so that's why I am on Medium in the first place. The second reason is that it's, um, for me personally, writing about my path, because I mostly write about technical stuff, writing about my path and my journey has helped me realize how many things I have I have done uh, to, to come where I am and it helps it helps me a little overcome imposter syndrome and all that so yeah I think it's it's been a good experience for me and the third reason is I personally like reading from I mean reading other people's stories uh, about their successes and their failures even sometimes and so i imagine it like we'll have different lives obviously and we can learn from each other obviously nobody is gonna have my life i'm not gonna have anybody's life either but they can take pieces or you know elements from other people's stories and and I could puzzle, you know, and they make my own composition. So maybe talking about my own my own experience can help others. I hope it does. And so that's why that's why I wrote it. Um, I'm going to to share the article in the screen. I'm not going to read it, just you know, so you have so you have it. I'm going to try to yeah to talk as it comes. I, and and we'll see we'll see what happens okay share okay so you should be seeing my article right now on medium so yeah before i begin i also would like to thank better programming it's the publication that published my article so thank you to them the their whole team uh, i'm very grateful and these are pictures I actually take. So I I am just a hobbyist photographer, but I, in fact, I attended before um, today on Medium Day a fantastic conference about using photographies in your articles. So if you watched it, it's great. And if you didn't watch it, you can watch it in the, yeah, because they're recording these videos. So yeah, this is Bergerac, the town where I live. So uh, let's begin my, so I am Eric. I am 36 right now. When I wrote this article two months ago, I was still 35. Um, I am a data analyst. I work uh, for a very big insurance company here in France. And yeah, it's been about a year and a half. Um, my journey to becoming a data analyst. So before this, I was a vineyard technician. So nothing related to tech, technology, all that. Um, before uh, becoming, um, so yeah, before I was a vineyard technician, sorry, and I want to talk to you about my my path. So I divided the story in three parts. I first want to let you know a bit where I come from and what I did before starting uh, to study technology. And then I want to share with you how I well, what's what I did to learn the stack and why I learned it. And then I want to end by <clears throat> telling you a little about how I actually landed my first job without a diploma. So I was I was born in Spain. I'm half Spanish and half French. I right, right now I live in France. 
So I speak uh, Spanish and French since I'm little. And also uh, my wife is an American citizen. Not that this is very important. I don't want to talk too much about my life, but <clears throat> when you're born in a non-English speaking country, speaking English is like part of the part of the things that you have to learn to, to work in tech, I believe. So I just thought it was honest to say it. And, you know, because that's actually something I didn't have to to make efforts to to learn. I don't obviously have a perfect English at all, but it's sufficient. Um, at high school, well, at school and then at, at high school, I was an OK student. I was not great. I was not terrible, um, but I had no real passion about anything, no dream profession. So I just, I competed in my high school and I did one year of chemical engineering. Um, well, uh, kind of, I, I enrolled, we're gonna say, it was a terrible year. I had a bad attitude, we're gonna say, towards life. I kind of parted the year away. And yeah, I'm not very proud of that, but it's done. So I, I remember I didn't like it and I, I especially did not like one class and that was programming. So just to, to let you know that I was not passionate, passionate about tech when I was growing up. Uh, in fact, my passion was more like living in the country. That's what I really wanted to do. Well, that's not doing something, but that was like one goal that I had. After that wasted year, I enrolled in biology. I and that I completed my Bachelor of Science in Biology, but I was not either passionate about it. I liked it, but I was not passionate. And I, when I was doing my, my school, I, I was thinking, what am I going to do after this? And I found uh, about viticulture and enology. So this is the, the science of winemaking. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to do that. And that's going to allow me to live in a rural environment. <clears throat> and after my studies of biology, I went to Bordeaux where I did a master's degree in viticulture and enology. And short after that, I started working in the wine industry. Today, when I look at my short experience in the wine industry, I'm going to scroll down a little. So yeah, it's about here. Today, when I when I look back at my short experience in the wine industry, it's not a negative. It's not negative overall. It's allowed me to live in the country, which was my primary goal. I've lived in villages of population ten to small to small towns where I am right now. For example, Bergerac. In fact, today I live in Bergerac. It's thanks to the fact that I was doing a job that allowed me to live in rural areas and also to the fact that i am full remote right now so i'm very grateful for that um so it's allowed me that it's also allowed me to travel a lot across france sometimes as a joke i say that i was kind of a non-digital nomad but i was not very nomadic but i have really been living in i i've been i Sorry, I have lived in Alsace, in Bordeaux, in Provence, in French Catalonia, in the Ribera del Duero in Spain. That's the village where I come from, where my father comes from. Um, and right now in Bergerac, right? So that was that was all good. On the bad side, the pay was low, very low, and there was not like good expectations of it getting better. And and I encountered some toxic people in my way. I believe this is not specific to the wine industry. That was my own experience, but it helped me kind of resign it a little. So that's that. But I have to say that this is not why I decided to get into tech. So this is a picture I took this year in Bretagne, where my grandmother lives that I went to see this year. This is the kind of places I like living in. Um, <clears throat> I called the switch, so this is the second part of my article, how I got into tech. The moment when I decided that I was going to start studying technology, not even that I was going to, to get in there. 
I worked for a winery where they had like no software at all, right? They, when I arrived before me, the vineyard technicians were contactors with their own software and they didn't have anything. And when I told them that they should try to invest in something, they told me maybe we have like two or 300 euros. And that meant like once, not even per year. And so I basically knew I was good. I had 600 hectares to follow. Um, this is big, right? And all across 15 different towns. And there was 70 wine growers that I had to, that had vines that I had to monitor. So it, I, I needed some kind of computerized solution, right? And I, I made me a system that consisted in free, free not as in open source free, free as in zero money cost. Uh, it had um, Locus Map, which is a an app to for hiking. I used Geopartai, which is a French service to draw. You can do many things. I used it to draw polygons that I could see with Locus Map. I used Cobo Toolbox to to get data from the fields. I mean, it was something. I'm kind of proud that I came with you know to this solution, but it was really not scalable and a bit painful to use. And all this led me to continue looking for solutions. I discovered a software called QGIS. So this is GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems. It's a type of software that lets you do spatial anal analysis and draw maps and all that. But it was too wide and too big, right? So I, I learned how to use it, but to extend it, you need to use Python. And that's how I started learning Python. And after that, my path was the following. I learned Python. I enrolled in the Python for Everybody Coursera specialization. Um, I believe it still is nowadays the most successful uh, Coursera uh, course ever. Um, it's a great course. I totally recommend it. If anyone wants to learn Python, it's, it's great. And when I finished that course, I knew that I only knew two things. One is that I loved programming. And the other one is that I knew that I had not the skills yet to build what I wanted to build. So after that, I enrolled in university again. I did this while studying. <clears throat> no, while working, sorry. I was still working in the winery in, in French Catalonia. So I enrolled in the University of Paris, but these were distance studies. I completed the first year. It took me two years to do it, but I completed it. I learned a ton of stuff, um, how to use Linux. I learned some of the web stack. I, there, were some, there was a course of Python tools, so it was great. <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm overall I'm satisfied with what I learned, but uh, I had to move because I changed jobs in the after four years in in Perpignan. I moved to where I am right now in Bergerac to work still in the wine industry, and with that moving, I, I stopped um, university also because the key moments of the semester were key moments of the vine cycle which are the harvest is the beginning of the semester and there is usually exams there that's september october here in france and june is the flowering of the vines so that's very very important um period of time where there is a lot of work to uh, when you do monitoring so and that's the end of the school semester right so there was that and also i thought there were better ways to to learn all this i, I could scroll down a little sorry i'm i'm talking and not really following i'm trying not to read right um so this is what i already talked about the learning process and well yeah about here maybe we can leave it here <clears throat> when i moved to Bergerac, I started working for a, an association still as a vineyard technician. And instead of studying too much, I started um, writing some code. Today, when I see it, I think, oh my God, it's it's not great, but actually it did what it had to do. So I used little scripts to make my life easier at work. I coded all days uh, at night or during weekends. And I really was loving um i even wrote sorry a qgis plugin so i'm kind of proud of that it's like a milestone for me because i i was kind of obsessed right like i wanted to build a qgis plugin uh, no matter what and i did it 
Um, the code is not great, but it works kind of, right? Right, not kind of, it works. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I was really loving programming and all this. So I thought, well, why not make this my, my profession? And that's when I when I decided that I was going to get a job in tech, no matter what. I didn't feel quite ready, so I decided to. This is the changing process. I'm gonna leave it here at the picture. Um, I decided that. So I enrolled. Sorry, in. By the way, this is the third part of the presentation on how I, how I get my first job in data analysis. I enrolled in two Coursera courses. One is the IBM data science specialization and another one is the Google data analytics, uh, also specialization, both in Coursera. <clears throat> I wanted three things. One, I needed something to put in my resume, to write it, to decorate my resume, if you wish. I needed projects for my portfolio. So that's I used those two projects along the scripts that I wrote at work. Well, it was not at work, it was after work, but I used them for work. And also I was looking for, because until then I had learned Python, I had learned uh, the web stack, I had learned, you know, different technologies. I wanted a course that was specific about how do you do this job of data analyst, right? And that is focused on the task that you have to do and that uses the tools. And for that part, it was it was great. I did those two courses. I left uh, the job I was doing with the intention of enrolling in a bootcamp. But while I was applying to this bootcamp, I did all my resume. I created some YouTube short videos that showcase my portfolio kind of. And I did some things like that. I rebuilt my LinkedIn profile and and I uploaded my resume to a French platform uh, for employment. And within the same day, I got three calls. Um, and after 15 days, I got hired. So I didn't do the bootcamp, obviously. So yeah, I have to say that a year ago, it was, this was a very, over a year ago, it was in May of 2022, when I got the call, the job market was more favorable than now, but it's still in France. I know in other parts of the world, this is a bit different right now, but in France it's still favorable for the, for the workers, for people who are looking for jobs, there's still high demand, but yeah, it was even easier a year ago. So probably that, that helped me too. So, and this is a sunset in Bergerac. Uh, this is taken from the bridge that is in the cover in the, in the first picture. So um, that's that's my path, and uh, that's my article. You can go and read it on Medium. I hope you liked what I told you, and if you guys have questions, I am willing to take them. Uh, oh wait. Um, So I don't see the questions, if there is any, um, but I know that some people didn't used to see them, so... Ah. What are... <clears throat> Okay, so Alvaro, I don't know how you, okay, approve. Alvaro says, what are the three most important courses MOOC you did and the cost of them? So MOOC, MOOC is, you probably guys know, but it's, it stands for Massive Open Online Courses. Coursera is a MOOC platform and the, the accessing, accessing the MOOCs is actually free. The Python for I can probably, well, it's okay. 
the Python for Everybody specialization I took, I didn't pay anything for it. So that's why I don't have the little certificate they give you. Um, and that's probably the most important one because that led to everything else, right? Without that one, without learning Python, I would not have learned all the other things. Uh, the Google Data Analysis Certificate was very, um, very rewarding for me. Um, it really helped me um, conceptualize the job of a data analyst a bit better. And, and uh, well, after that, I have done other MOOCs that were more, that were more um, specific to what I do right now in my job, like, <clears throat> about data warehousing, that was very good too. Uh, all of them in Coursera. I have only done MOOCs in Coursera, excepting for very long ago. I did some some MOOCs, but it was not related to tech. Um, and thank you for the question, Alba. Uh, ta -ta -ta. So, Norella. Norella C, your story is inspiring. I come from a human science field and started to learn Python this year. It turned out I liked it. Uh, no, I know how to build, oh, now I know how to build mini projects like games. Wasn't bad at math at high school, but I haven't used it frequently in my career as an insti institutional, I uh, know, sorry, instructional design, which where you greatest mind obstacles and how you deal with them. Oh, the greatest mind obstacles. Um, I have a lot of those. I have trouble believing in myself in general. Um, one limitation I had, like I, I really thought that it was going to be harder for me to get a job without a diploma because that also depends a lot of where you live here in France. People are very, very driven by that, but I guess the tech industry is a bit different. So that was a big limitation. And, uh, and how do you deal with them? And well, how did I deal with that? I just, yeah, I just do things in general. When I have like things that block me, I, it's because I see that the task is too big and like I see the mountain and I think I'm never going to be able to go over that mountain. What I do is I, I try to, to make the task. I, I take one task that there is to do and I write it on paper or whatever. And I do that for that day. I do things one day at a time kind of thing. And like, I, I don't know if it makes sense, but that's how I approach things now. I, Instead of freezing and not acting, I take little daily steps uh, that go in the direction that I want to go to, obviously. Like I started writing on Medium and why? I, I mean, I thought for a long time, I thought Man, it would be good to write on Medium. And one day I thought, well, then write one article and <laughs> you'll see what happens after that, right? And I... Yeah, and that's how I started this year. I started this year. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I think those are all the questions. It's there is five minutes. Um, <clears throat> if there is no other questions, I really don't see any. I did not prepare anything else. I could talk about how this year has been going. So yeah, I have, I think I've said it at the beginning, but this first year in data analysis, it's been really, really good for me. I am, and just to follow with the answer I was giving to Norella, I, I really thought 
it was going to be harder, but actually I'm doing pretty good at work, right? So I really, I had these limitations that were just in my head and and at the end it's it's fine. So just sometimes just doing things is is the best answer. Okay, so I think, well, we have five more minutes. Um, uh, ta -ta -ta. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, Jack Wong, I just saw that you, I was looking at the Q&A part. Uh, it's not, if not a data scientist, what job would you choose and why? Uh, I can always come back to the wine industry. No, I mean, when you say if not a data scientist, I before moving into data science, I thought about still in tech. I thought about um, I lost my word about, <laughs> about website development. Um, I when I studied the web stack, I think it's fun and it's kind of rewarding to build web pages. It's something that very quickly you you can create something that looks good, right? With some HTML and very quickly, yeah, you can have something functional and then from there the complexity increases. But I, I really liked um, web development and I think in tech that would have been it. Out of tech, uh, well, I have already worked in the wine industry, I think I would still try to to, to work in something that allows me to, to live in the country. I tried to, to become a vet when I was younger too, but that's before I, that's before I enrolled in biology, but I, I failed. The test to become a vet by not by much, um, but yeah, that's a regulated profession, so you cannot just become a vet like that out of the out of the hat. Right? Uh, Poppy says, "What platform do you use most to further your education in data science?" Um, okay, the one I have used, and I, I, it's been a long time. Well, not a long time. It's been some time. I don't use it no more, but I'm. I plan on keep using it. It's Coursera uh, for my education. Um, yeah, I have done lots of MOOCs on Coursera. Uh, Jack Wang, what three skills do you think are the most difficult or important to acquire for people to make a transition from other fields to a career in data science? The most difficult or important to acquire? But I guess it depends. Um, I can talk from my experience. Programming was was difficult, but not the logical part involved in programming, not the if else statements, but it's, you know, all the syntax, all the, yeah, it's, it, I think learning programming is hard at first. So that's, uh, you know, programming is one of them. One thing also that for me was very hard to conceptualize, I don't know if this happens to a lot of people, now I see it clear, right? But back in the days, I had a lot of trouble with conceiving the difference between client, server, all that sort of networks, I would say, would be the, if that's a skill, it's kind of a knowledge more than a skill. But that was something I had trouble with. Now, it, now I'm fine. And... <clears throat> To be a, you said data science or analysis? Uh, to data science and the third skill, what could it be? And I, uh, the thing is I'm not in data science, I am more in data analysis. So right now I would like to eventually get in more into data science in fact. Uh, data science has kind of a mathematical compound to it. I think that maybe for some people it's harder to get. Mm, yeah, maybe I think it depends. All this depends on on what's your background, 
and where you come from. I had kind of a scientific background, so that probably helped me a little. So um, it's it's nine. Um, I want to thank you all for coming to the conference, and I hope you you continue having a fantastic medium day. If anyone has more questions, I am still here, but I I don't know. I, I think they don't cut the. They don't cut the session at nine. Thank you too for being here, Jack. Okay, so I'm going to close this. Thank you again for for being here. Oh, and thank you to Ra sorry, Ragavendra. I think I hope it's wrong like that. I'm sorry if I pronounce it wrong. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm. I guess I'm gonna go now. The time is over. I still see people. See you. Thank you for coming. Bye. Bye. Bye.